Hi everybody. So this past weekend, I got to see an advanced screening of the Angry Birds movie. Lucky me. Yeah. When they announced this movie, I had two thoughts really. My first thought was, they will make a movie out of anything, won't they? Like Literally everything is fair game nowadays. Everything. And this point was proven earlier today when I found out they're making a Tetris movie. Why? Just, I don't know. And my second thought was, well, this is probably not going to be very good. But I wanted to see the movie anyway just to make sure, especially since I had a pass and it was going to be free, so why not? But, you know, I had a similar thought about the Lego movie. Like, really? How are you going to make a movie out of Legos? That doesn't seem like it's going to work. But then I saw the movie and it turned out to be amazing. I think that movie surprised a lot of people. So maybe the Angry Birds movie will end up surprising me. Yeah, it didn't. This was kind of stupid. So if you're not familiar with the mobile game series on which this movie is based, the plot of the game, such as it is, is basically a bunch of piggies come to this island populated by flightless birds and steal all of their eggs, and the birds fight back by slingshotting themselves at the piggies. So how do you get a feature-length movie out of that? Well, I suppose the correct answer is you don't, but the next best answer is probably you just scrap that and make up your own story. And it seemed like that was kinda what they were going for in the first act anyway. The movie starts out with the main Red Bird, who is apparently named Red. His parents were not very creative. And he is apparently working as a birthday clown. Or at least he is in the opening scene. We never actually see him do this again. But anyway, he is trying to deliver this birthday cake to a family, and he is taking the longest possible route to get there for some bizarre reason, making this long-ass trek through the jungle and falling out of trees and dodging wild animals and all this other stuff. And I have no idea why, because we establish later on in the movie that all of these birds live in this very close, tight-knit community where pretty much everyone is within spitting distance of everyone else, so... Where he went to get this cake, I have no idea. It makes absolutely no sense. But anyway, after this really long slapstick sequence that goes on far too long, he finally delivers the cake, but he shows up late and gets chewed out by the birds because he's late. And then he mouths off to them because he's apparently got a bit of a temper. And we then establish this by going through this long montage of every event in his past that made him angry. Just so you can get the idea that, yes, this is called the Angry Birds movie. Because he's angry, damn it. Oddly enough, this montage is set to Black Sabbath's Paranoid. For some reason. I, I mean, I like the song, but I'm not sure why they chose that particular song. Um, also not sure why this montage wasn't in chronological order. Odd choice. Anyway, this ultimately leads to a judge ordering him to attend anger management classes, which is kind of weird because it doesn't seem like it's his fault that he's angry. He's angry because a lot of bad shit keeps happening to him. If I lived this guy's life, I'd be angry all the time too. But anyway, it's in these anger management classes that we meet the other birds that you would probably recognize from the games. There's the bomb bird, whose name is Bomb. Again, parents were not very creative. The yellow bird, whose name is not yellow, it's Chuck. Because of course it is. And the big red fat-ass bird, whose name is Terrence. I don't know where they came up with these names. And before anyone says, well, actually, that's what they were called in the game, I don't care. So that's the story for about the first act. But then the pigs show up, and that whole anger management thing is basically forgotten at that point. And then it becomes a story of... The pigs trying to make friends with all the birds on the island, even though they obviously have an ulterior motive, and Red, for some reason, is the only one who notices the obviously evil pigs are obviously evil, because he's the only bird on the entire island that isn't a complete fucking moron, 
and everyone else just keeps telling him to piss off every time he tries to warn them, hey, the obviously evil pigs are obviously evil, until the pigs finally steal all the eggs, and then, of course, it's too late, and they all go, oh, we're so sorry, we didn't realize the fucking obvious, and he's like, yeah, whatever, let's go get the eggs back, and then the movie basically turns into the video game, and they all start slingshotting themselves at the piggies, and they get the eggs back, and the day is saved, the end. That's the story. And since it did not take me very much time at all to describe the entire plot to you, you're probably wondering, well, how do they stretch all of that out to 90 minutes? And the answer is... not well. I get the feeling the writers were really struggling to write a feature-length story for this movie, because there is a lot of filler. There's that whole slapstick sequence at the beginning, and there are quite a few random musical numbers that just come out of nowhere. The soundtrack is pretty random overall, come to think of it. It sounds like someone took their music collection and just hit shuffle all, and whatever the first ten songs were, that's what they went with. And after the piggies arrive, since none of the other birds are being particularly helpful, Red decides to get help from this legendary bird known as Mighty Eagle, who apparently lives on top of this big-ass mountain, so they got this long mountain climbing sequence with Red and his friends trying to find the eagle, and once they get to the top of the mountain, they realize, oh shit, we climbed the wrong mountain, we're supposed to be over there. Are you kidding me? How long can you possibly drag this out? Just climb the fucking mountain already! As far as the humor, honestly, it's not all bad. There were a few moments here and there that did legitimately get a laugh out of me, but a lot of it is not very good, and there's also quite a bit of gross-out humor in this movie. There's this one bird that sneezes all the time and keeps blowing snot everywhere, because of course he does. And when they first meet Mighty Eagle, the very first thing he does, he walks out of the cave, stands on the edge of this cliff, and pees into the lake which they had just been swimming in. The people who made this movie had a strange fascination with bodily fluids. And there are some really bizarre references in this movie. There's a Fifty Shades of Grey reference. I'm not kidding. It's one of those things where you blink and you miss it, but, you know, when Red and his friends sneak onto the pig's boat at one point in this movie, they find a book called Fifty Shades of Green just sitting there on the shelf. They never actually acknowledge it, but why is it even there? Why would you put a Fifty Shades reference in a kid's movie? What in the actual fuck? There's also this really weird reference to The Shining for some reason. When they're in the pig's castle looking for the eggs, they open this one door and inside they see these twin girls that are dressed up like the twins from The Shining. And one of them says, Red Rum! And they just close the door and move on. First of all, that violates the rule of not referring to a better movie during your own. Second, comes right the fuck out of nowhere, has nothing to do with the story at all. Third, your target audience is mostly small, dumb children, I imagine. They're not gonna know The Shining. They're not gonna know what the hell that is. And in The Shining, the twin girls didn't say red rum, they said, come play with us. So they can't even get the reference right. If you're going to put a Shining reference in your movie for no good goddamn reason at all, you could at least do it correctly. Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. What really surprises me are some of the casting choices in this movie. I mean, I'm not terribly surprised that Peter Dinklage is in this because he'll do anything. He did pixels for crying out loud. But... Sean Penn is the voice of Terrence, the big fat-ass red bird. And Terrence doesn't actually talk, he just grunts. And Sean Penn has two Oscars under his belt, so I imagine an actor of his caliber would not come with a low price tag, so I don't know how they were able to afford him, but why would you even bother to spend all that money on him if all you're gonna do is put him in a booth and have him make a few grunting noises? I wouldn't be surprised if they just had him fall asleep in there and stuck a microphone next to him while he was snoring. I don't know. What? Just why? Why was he even here? I have not been so confused by the presence of Sean Penn since The Tree of Life. Which is admittedly an odd comparison for this movie, but still, why was he even there? So, final verdict, this movie is stupid and you really shouldn't bother. It's not worth the money. It honestly doesn't even feel like a movie that should have been released theatrically. This feels like a hastily made direct-to-video movie. I mean, the animation looks fine. It's not that the quality is lacking there, it's just the story is so 
aimless and charmless, and it feels like there was almost no effort put into this at all. And I think this reportedly cost them about $75 million or so to make, and another $100 million on top of that for marketing to distribution. I will be amazed if they do not lose money on this. Well, at least I didn't have to pay any money to see this, and neither should you. And that's all I have to say about the Angry Birds movie, so until next time, take care.